welcome to another Monday and not taking orders where I've just been catching up with my good friend Kai Cronfield of Nosh This. So Kai, welcome. Thank you for being a part of our show. Thank you for having me. Kai has the coolest job ever, okay? And Kai makes chocolates. Doesn't lie. No, no, of course I don't lie. Kai makes chocolates which of course attracts girls, but let's talk about what you did before you made chocolate. So let's go back in time because you had a pretty cool job I did. before you had the coolest job ever. I Tell did. us what you did. Uh, I used to be an architect um, and I worked on residential projects in the Bay Area and uh -huh. in uh, around the, the country. Mm -hmm. um, then I moved to Nairobi in Kenya for four years to work for the UN mm -hmm. and it was great. I loved what I was doing, so. So here's what worries me though. So. You've told me before that you're a better chocolatier than you were an architect. Mm -hmm. So you must be I, one hell of a chocolatier. I believe that's true. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, we'll go with that. I, w I was a good architect. I'm I'm a better chocolatier. Uh, I, I've we brought some chocolates that. here today uh, so that we can taste them with wine and and spirits and bourbons, bourbons and greyhounds. And, and greyhounds. And... Um, but yeah, I'm I, I love what I do now. So how did you get into chocolates? Was this like a family thing? Is this something you grew up with? Do you have a sweet tooth? Not at all. Um, this, this was an, a complete lucky accident. Um, I had a piece of bacon one day and at home and was, was looking for a, a, a piece of sweet after that and realized that I had a piece of butter toffee in the refrigerator that a friend had given me. And mm -hmm. I went to my refrigerator, snapped off a piece of that, had it, had the bacon after that and realized that those two things needed to go together. And so it became a process of, I needed to make a better bacon bar than had been made before. We all need better bacon bars. Yes. And that's just real. So tell me about, so did you then like go and learn how to, because chocolate's hard. Chocolate is hard. I cooked fish and yeah. fish is easy. Chocolate's hard. It's <laughs> tempering and scientific and sugar crystals. So how did you go to learn how to do this? Um, it was, it was trial and error. Um, I've, I've always cooked. I've, I grew up. Uh, with a mother and a grandmother who taught me how to cook, but it was not sugar. I never baked. I didn't do okay. sugar. Um, and it just became a process of trial and error. And I got really good at it. I got a product that was called Bacon Crack. Um, and I took it to a friend's party and she finally pushed me out the door and said, just stop, go leave us and go make a job. A friend, um, a, gr a girlfriend, an no, ex-girlfriend? Not an ex-girlfriend. One that might be watching right now? No, yeah, actually one of my best friends from college. Yeah. Okay, all just, right. Yeah. So you could always cook. So what was your go-to, like what could, as, as a kid I could scramble eggs, mm -hmm. which I was really, really proud mm -hmm. of. Um, what was your go-to, what, what could you cook as a kid? Uh, linguine with olio olio. Uh, linguine with olive oil and garlic. That that oh. was my, that was my go-to. It's the easiest thing in the world to make, but it's what I always, always made. I had never cooked a piece of candy before, That's before crazy. making bacon crack and it just became a thing. So was bacon crack your first product? Bacon crack was the first product. And what I would, so I, I would make this toffee, but I wouldn't cover it with any, it was just out there and, and it would start to go it would oxidize okay. and I realized that that's what was happening and why it wasn't lasting long. And I realized that if I dipped it in chocolate, it would be better. It sealed it. Okay. And so I, wasn't, I wasn't even really at that point thinking of taste. I, I was just thinking of longevity. You to keep talking about bacon crack okay. so that I have a moment to actually try the bacon crack. Cause we all know I'm okay. addicted to it. Is that how you got the name crack? It is. Or is um, it because you sometimes sell crack. it? Oh, is this the almond crack? That's the almond crack. This is the bacon. Can crack. I get into it? Yes. Okay. Keep Go talking. Big. Um, yeah, so it just, it became uh, a, a thing that I made and needed an outlet to sell it and started selling it on the streets of San Francisco. So um, you were, you were a bacon crack dealer on the streets a, in San Francisco. That's real. I was a crack in, in the mission uh -huh. um, on 20th and Valencia. Um, I actually have sold crack to a cop. I, wow, I was, uh, amazing. True. Uh, don't try this at home, kids. Uh, it goes really well with bourbon. I don't know if anybody huh, knows that. I don't but believe you. I'm going to try it. Because I love bourbon. You know that's many things. Uh -huh. Mm. Mm. Give it. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. You're already drinking. So bacon crack was your first product, mm -hmm. and it's really good. And I'm salivating. I'm gonna drool on my shelf a little bit. Does that not go good with bourbon? Um. So personally, I think that bacon crack goes good with everything. Mm -hmm. Um. But you stopped me because I started to get into the other product. The almond crack. Yeah. Which I'm gonna tell you, like honestly, as 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 a very carnivorous woman, I love bacon crack. Mm -hmm. But I actually like the almond crack better because of the saltiness in the almonds. So I'll, I'll tell you was a secret. that your next product? I'll or? tell you a secret. I okay. like it. I like it better too. Because I love it's, secrets. Can we talk about secrets? It's the one I eat every day. 
Um, I, I, bacon crack is my baby. Mm. That one right there, baby. Gosh, um, so fucking good. Right? Um, I'm so glad we're friends. <laughs> Um, mm. yeah, Can I no, put that bacon... like gratuitous food porn right now? Sure, gratuitous food porn. Mm -hmm. um, almond crack came about as a result of getting in a little bit of trouble with the USDA. Oh, um, I love trouble. Please trouble. go ahead. Yeah, so... Oh, okay. Did you go to jail? Nope, didn't. Have you ever been to jail? Nope, never. Lies. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Um, yeah, the USDA found my product at a store and it was... I do not cook my product under USDA inspection and okay. there's a rule that if you have more than 2% meat in a product that you're selling wholesale, it has to be cooked under USDA inspection. So there's more than 2% of bacon in there's here? There's 11% of bacon. Uh -huh. my, my bacon mm -hmm. crack is five and a half times the legal amount of bacon in a product. So mm -hmm. that's that led me Wait, by necessity five to- Five and a half times the legal amount of bacon? Yep. I've turned God. this up to 11. Wow. Um, my chocolate doesn't just look illegal, it tastes illegal. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to come up with a new product. By necessity, I had to reinvent and came up with Almond Crack. Um, Which old, I love. An old friend of mine really wanted me to make her some, some Almond Crack that she could eat that didn't have bacon in it because she mm -hmm. was a vegetarian. I had resisted and resisted, but I came up with Almond Crack and it is outselling Bacon Crack now. Well, if you could just keep talking, I'm just going to keep eating and you okay, can wanna, go ahead and host your own show. I'm going to eat one too. Um, so, Almond Crack's really good. No, no. Uh -huh. This is like the sloppiest show we've ever done. Um, <laughs> sloppy? So, what are you about? This is not sloppy. This is tasty. I know. No, but uh, there's drool and there's like crack all over the table. So tell me about the name Nosh This, mm -hmm. okay? Because you're using bacon, mm -hmm. but Nosh This. Nosh is the Yiddish word to snack. Right. And typically the, the two don't go together. So um, it's kind of tongue in cheek. Yeah, it, it is tongue in cheek. I'm half Jewish. Okay. Um, you're my, half? I am. Was your mom Jewish? Yeah, no, father. No, okay. So, technically, so then you not. can eat bacon. Good for yeah. you. Um, my dad stands at the kitchen counter and noshes all day long. That's he, he and, and so in in sort of somewhat homage to my, my cultural roots, I just called it nosh. I love the word. Um, and I it was a tongue in cheek reference to yes, I'm making a bacon chocolate and mm -hmm. selling a bacon chocolate. Uh, a few rabbis um, and and Yiddish mamas have sent me some e nasty emails about the fact mm. that I'm using bacon, but I, I think Jews are supposed to have sensitive sort of humor. Do you reply and, like, oy vey? Am nope. I going to get in trouble for saying that? I actually that? don't respond to those. No. Oh. My grandfather <laughs> was Jewish, so I think I could say that, right? I don't respond mm -hmm. to those. Um, the, the Protestant side of my family is the one that's making the bacon chocolate. Okay. The Jewish side of the family is making all the other ones, so I do have some assorted salted caramels that I brought. Okay, I love um, this idea. Yeah. So, um, one, one great thing is that the, a lot of my chocolates pair well with wine and spirits, and I do an assorted box of salted caramels uh, that's over there, and maybe Christina can point those out. So Please that one that she's grabbing right there is the Meyer Lemon Salted Caramel. Which we pair with Greyhounds? Uh, or Sauvignon Blanc? Give it a shot. I, okay. think it's gonna, I think the citrus in the Greyhound is going to pair well with the citrus in the caramel. Okay, so what I really want to know is... Tell me this is healthy for me. Where do the products come from? Are they organic? Are they mm -hmm. kumbaya? The Meyer lemons come from your neighbor, don't they? Uh, yes, backyard lemon trees okay. in, in San Francisco. I actually started with um, backyard lemons from my mom's tree, but okay. that sadly fell over. That's mm. so sexy. <laughs> <laughs> That's hot. I'm covered in chocolate. <laughs> Here, I saved some for you. Thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, so all of my, my ingredients are as local as I can make them. So mm. I use chocolate from Goutard Chocolate Company. Down in Burlingame, obviously they don't grow the chocolate, the cacao beans in, in California, but mm -hmm. the, it's roasted and, and made in California. The balsamic vinegar I use is from Devero Farms up in Santa Rosa. The Meyer lemons are backyard lemons. Um, the sugars are organic um, and fair trade. The syrup I use is not corn syrup. I use a Lyle's golden syrup from England. Um, What's it made out of if it's not made out of corn? Uh, it's cane. It's cane sugar. Okay, sugar cane. It, it's Love cane that. sugar syrup. Uh, my grandmother was Irish on my non-Jewish side, Irish. something like that. Um, and she always had Lyle's golden syrup in her kitchen. So when I found a recipe that called for either corn syrup or golden mm -hmm. syrup, I immediately defaulted to Lyle's golden syrup because I love it. It's family. Um, and the bacon I use for my bacon crack is from Zoe's Meats in Petaluma. So I really am trying to keep everything as local as possible. Mm -hmm. and. 
um, make a great tasting product. So tell me about Which this. one is that? That's the black pepper. Uh, yeah, I jumped ahead. Yeah. I actually knocked your entire display down to get to it because the black pepper is actually my favorite. I'm a savory person. I love potato chips over pastries. And so for me, I think that this is the most versatile when it comes to food. Mm -hmm. I drink a lot of Cabernets. Yeah. Professional hazard. But that's, that's what she does. But how did you like, come up with the idea of doing all of these different savory flavors? Um, I weirdly don't have a sweet tooth. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I understand that. I, I never have classic dessert at restaurants. Um, I would default to a hunk of Parmesan and a glass of red wine as my dessert. I want to finish my meal savory. I don't really have a sweet tooth, though I eat chocolate every day now. Professional hazard. Um, the flavor profiles, the bacon was the obvious. Uh -huh. That one, that, that fateful day back in April of 2010, when I was having a piece of bacon and wanted a sweet, that, that was obvious. Mm -hmm. um, I love bacon. I really, really love bacon. Thank God. That's why we're um, friends actually. And, but the, uh, the, the other flavors, the, the black pepper, I have black pepper on almost everything I eat. So mm -hmm. I immediately thought that that would go well with sweet. Mm -hmm. um, made it, tried it, and it worked almost immediately. The balsamic vinegar, I had a balsamic from uh, Olivier and Company, mm -hmm. um, which was a 20-something-year-old aged balsamic vinegar. I tried that in the caramel. Way too expensive. Um, Happens. But Devera Farms makes one of the best vinegars I've ever had. They're local. They're great. Mm -hmm. And it just that flavor profile seemed like it would work for a caramel. Um, and does it work? Hold it, on. Uh, no, I'll oh, let you know. Okay, you'll, you'll let me know. Uh -huh. She's never had these before. Ever. Yeah. It's like a whole new experience for me. Mm. That's what I love. <laughs> she, she does this. That is this everywhere. <laughs> which is incredible. Let's see. I want the I want the balsamic. I haven't had that for a while. Mm. So I really, really love what you're doing. And let's do a shameless plug real quick. Because uh -huh. while I, you know... Friends with benefits, so I get all the little salted caramels I want. Where can people find friends your product? Friends with benefits, is that what we are? Well, Sweet. You get the friends and I get the benefits. Okay. So. Oh, because that means something different, I think. What, what does it mean? Well, <laughs> check Urban Dictionary. Really? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh-oh. What you were saying? Yeah. About friends with benefits and mm. shameless plugs and what? Mm. Hi. Mm. So... Back on topic. Um, <laughs> so your website is noshthis.com. HTTP colon backslash whatever noshthis.com. Mm -hmm. N-O-S-H-T-H-I-S dot com. And people can order directly from you there? They can order on the website. Um, there's a link to all of my products. I have some new stuff. Um, wait, these... what, what, wait, hold on. You have some new stuff? I do. What do you have? Uh, macadamia Crack on Fuego, which I've actually sent you a piece of that. You didn't no, like it. Uh, oh, was that your hob she, habanero? She's really wimpy when it comes to oh, spicy not things. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Um, she is. No, I'm not. Um, it is a habanero roasted macadamia nut in butter toffee dipped in chocolate. We did try that. It's kind of spicy. It's spicy. Mm -hmm. What do you pair that with? Tequila? Sure. Barrel aged tequila? Sure. Okay. Never paired it with anything. Um, mm. I just eat it and it's lovely. Okay. Um, I also just yesterday came up with a new thing. Well, no, 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 no. Friday came up with a new thing um, that I sold yesterday for the first time called bacon crackanola. Mm -hmm. It is bacon crack crumbled up mixed with my friend's granola, Ooh. which is Nana Joe's Granola Company. Um, and then in Why don't I have that? filled up with chocolate um, or put into chocolate and poured out and broken into pieces. So it's basically breakfast chocolate. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like breakfast um, chocolate. Those are the new things I have. Uh, I am working on an A, B, and J. Uh -huh. I've, I've given you a piece of I love of a, B, your A, B, and J. So, For those at home, A, B is almond butter. J is raspberry jam? Raspberry ganache. Raspberry ganache, yes. Mm -hmm. Using another friend of mine, uh, Daphna from In a you Jam. You tend to use your friends, I'm learning. I, it's okay, I, I use mine too, so cheers to that. There's a great food community in the Bay Area, <laughs> and, and friends help friends. So... Uh, in a jam makes a raspberry shrub that I've made into a ganache and it is delicious. I'm just learning. Uh, so shrub was a new word that I learned today, meaning not a bush. What's what I used to call George Bush. Well, we weren't, we won't get into politics because okay. you're much taller than I am. Um, I so, am. I really am. I know. So, and I was not standing on stilts. Uh-uh. And I'm in heels. 
<laughs> uh, so shrub, like talk about what a raspberry shrub is, because well, I don't think that I didn't know this morning, and I eat a lot. So yeah. let's go on okay. that for a moment. A shrub, as far as I understand it, is a vinegar-based drink additive. So it's basically okay. vinegar, sugar, and fruit juice or puree or something along those lines mm -hmm. that can be added to soda water. It can be added to a cocktail. Um, I've made it into a ganache, um, but it is a very potent, um, very intensely flavored vinegar-based drink additive. Interesting. That's a shrub, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. and, and Daphna, if I've gotten that wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> right but, in. But in Click a shrub. Click the join me button and you can correct us on that definition. Don't do that. Um, in a jam, shrubs are tremendous. She makes an apricot one or apricot, however you mm -hmm. want to say that. Um, the raspberry one is my favorite. Mm -hmm. I know she makes a Meyer lemon one. So go look up inajam.com. I love I the name of that. Yeah, like I, you're, I love the name of your company, Nosh This, and In A Jam. Mm -hmm. You guys must like have a lot of fun to be able to come up with these ideas. I mean, I, I didn't know her when I came up with mine, and nor her, she, well, hers, and, she, hers. Yeah. So, um, so here's something that I think is really cool because when mm -hmm. we're talking about like artisan products and, and putting love into things, like you really are the artisan, right? Yes. You touch everything. How many employees does Nosh This have? Zero. So it's just you doing yeah. all of this. I do have a couple of friends. I, I, I don't want to minimize the, the, the benefit that my friends provide to my company. Um, but technically I have zero employees. Wow. Um, and I am, I am the maker and the, the brains behind it and the bookkeeper and, and all of that. So. Wow. Well, and this is kind of a, a trend that's going on now. This idea of like localism and artisan producers. You know what I learned today? The average. Mm number of miles that a food travels to get to your plate is 1,500 miles. I wouldn't doubt that. Locavore cuisine has to be within 100 miles. I will give you, you're in San Francisco, so it's like 40 miles, guys. Yeah. But I, mean, I think that's really cool. Because so, we're in the country right now. There's like yeah, cows. Just because the right cell phone service doesn't have all five bars does not mean you're in the country. One bar. That's your, that's your provider problem. But what I want to know is... Like this has to be a big risk to stop being an architect, which seems like it'd be a fairly stable profession mm -hmm. to jump in to do, well, what I love, I can only assume that you love. What are some of the struggles that you go through as a small artisan producer? Um, I don't sleep that much. <laughs> Is that why you're worried about the bags under your eyes? What bags? You look great. I don't know what you're talking about. You look great. Um, it's, it's the, build, the business never turns off. It's a seven day a week. Thing. Um, if mm -hmm. I do have a quote unquote day off, the phone will ring, the emails will pop up and mm -hmm. I do have to respond to it. It's being a, a small business owner and entrepreneur is, is a full time 24 hour a day job. Um, the lack of a regular paycheck, not knowing where rent is going to come from next month. Uh huh is a constant worry. Um, but you know what? I, I've built my own company. I, I love what I'm doing. I, I love making people happy through food and people seem to like it. So. so it's a labor of love. It's a labor of love. So let's talk about some successes because I think it's actually on this box here. What? Tell me what, there's a little oh, sticker on this box. Yeah, so yeah, tell yeah, me that what one. that means. So that is the Good Food Award. Um, I was fortunate enough to win a good food award in 2014 mm -hmm. and for my almond crack. So one of the benefits of having the USDA come and, and make me redefine my business model mm -hmm. was that I came up with almond crack and the, the good food awards are an award based primarily on good taste, but the, the products go through a blind taste test. And then wow. if they are deemed good enough to, to move on, the company and the product gets vetted for sustainability and uh, local production methods, etc. And if you satisfy all of those requirements, you are awarded a good food award. So I'm extremely happy to have won one. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to win more because I think I have some pretty good products. But um, 
I can now say I am an award-winning chocolatier. Well, I always thought you were award-winning, but I do have a good friend who's a cardiologist who actually told me, and I'm gonna say this like a sportscaster, are you ready? If you disregard the butter and the sugar and the almond crack, it's actually very heart healthy. <laughs> Almonds are good for you. Dark chocolate is good for you. And the red wine is good for you. So you are doing well for your health. Didn't that sound yes. like a sportscaster? It is. It, if you it disregard did. all the times that he's missed, he's hit every single time. And I, and I, I do remember meeting that guy uh -huh. um, and, and was quite pleased to see the quote that he had in his, his little thing about yeah. how, how heart conscious my chocolate was. It's actually amazing. It's, it's so. Air quotes. On we are going to run out of time, but we there's are. one last Already? question that I want to ask. Okay, because yes. everybody knows that chocolate is an aphrodisiac. Okay. So let's talk about Kai's life. Kai is single. Yes. Ladies, and Hi. you can find Kai. Uh, she said on Facebook. she wasn't going to be talking about this. He's also a Giants fan. Hum, baby. He prefers tall women. I have orange and black tennis shoes. I'm a Giants fan. That match her dress. They do. I really yes. appreciated that when we were getting dressed. So anything, I mean, aside from noshthis.com, anything else that you really want to address or say or life meaning or oh, are you God. ready for Hillary? Do you You're... want to talk about that? Or... <laughs> I thought we weren't talking about politics. <laughs> we're not, actually. We go back and forth uh, we do. about politics. Uh -huh. We are wrestle um, sometimes. Totally divergent mm. positions on who should run this country. Yeah, no, try to just close your mouth. There you go. So... Thank you, Kai, so much. This has been so much fun. You You're like very that? welcome. I distracted you. That's good. Uh huh. Chocolate is amazing. I highly recommend that you pair it with bourbon. You should get your own. Pair Don't take wine. my word for it. Don't wine. Get in there. Get messy. Pair it with makes wine. These chocolates. Your chocolates, by the way, Mother's Day is coming up. Make the absolute best gift to anybody because clearly your mom's watching this, isn't she? She. Your is. mom. Expect some chocolate, Mama I Macamar. I know. Mm -hmm. Kai, thank you so much for You're being welcome. with us on another edition of Not Taking Orders. Cheers. Don't stand up again because I look short. I'm totally standing up. <laughs> no, She's don't. Totally, take off your shoes. <laughs> Shut up.